Hey guys, it's Corinne from It's So Corinne here. And today we are going to be crocheting this super cute Mickey Mouse Amigurami ball. Now, before we begin the tutorial, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the It's So Corinne YouTube channel. So that way you can be notified when I make videos just like these. So, to begin the Mickey Mouse Amigurami ball, you of course are going to need yarn. You're going to need red, white, and black yarn. Um, you are going to need medium weight yarn that is 100% cotton, um, which is a category four yarn. Now my brands are Peaches and Cream for the white, and then I use the Hobby Lobby in-house brand, Crafter Secret, for the black and the red. But um, both those brands I like a lot. And then you are going to need a 3.25 millimeter letter D crochet hook and then you are going to need a yarn needle so that way we can close up his bottom and then also add his ears to the top and then make his little white buttons and you are going to need a stitch marker Mickey Mouse is crocheted in the round so we are going to need to mark our first stitch of each round so that way we know exactly where it's at and then you are going to need some polyfill to stuff the ball and you can either use polyfill or stuffing out of a pillow which is what I typically do but um, once you have all your supplies gathered we are ready to start crocheting the Mickey Mouse Amigurami ball to begin the Mickey Mouse Amigurami ball we are going to insert six single crochets into the magic circle so this is one. We're going to put our stitch marker there. So that way you know where the first stitch is. And then two, three, four, five, six. And what you're going to do is you are going to pull on the tail of the magic ring and pull it tight. But you don't want to pull it too tight because I find with these tiny projects that sometimes it's hard to get into the first stitch. Um, so don't pull it super, super tight until you do round two. Now at the end of round one, you will have six single crochet. For round two, we are going to put an increase into each stitch of the previous round. And an increase is just adding two single crochets into the one from the last round. So that's one, and add your stitch marker. And then two. And then we're just gonna continue that around. We're gonna add two single crochets into each stitch from the previous round. At the end of round two, you will have 12 stitches. And as you can tell, I still have a hole in the center and that's because I didn't pull the magic rings tail super tight because I wanted to make sure that I had some play in the stitches. And so you would pull on that tail now to close that hole. I know it's hard to tell because I'm using black and black yarn does not film very well, but it is Mickey's color. <laughs> So, for round three, we are going to put a single crochet into the first stitch. Just that one, add our stitch marker. And then we are going to add an increase into the next stitch. So one, two. And then we are going to do that around. You're going to add a single crochet into the next stitch and then a increase into the next. And just repeat that all the way around. At the end of round three, you will have 18 stitches. For round four, we are gonna insert a single crochet into the first two stitches. So we do a single, single, and then an increase into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. You're going to put a single crochet, single crochet, then an increase all the way around. At the end of round four, you will have 24 stitches. For round five, we are going to put a single crochet into 
each of the first three stitches of the round. So that's one, put my marker, two, uh oh, my yarn got messed up. Let's try that again. Two, three, and then we're going to put an increase in the next stitch. And we are going to repeat that all the way all the way around the for this round you're going to put a single crochet into the next three stitches so single 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 and then an increase into the next stitch and we'll just repeat that all the way around at the end of round five you will have 30 stitches for rounds six through nine you are going to just single crochet into each stitch of the previous round so you would do single crochet for each stitch in round six, seven, eight, and nine. When you get to the last stitch of round nine, you are going to change the color to red. So in order to do that, you're just gonna insert your hook and yarn over and pull through like you normally would and have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to take the red and you're gonna hold the tail over here and you're going to pull the red through those two loops. Oops. And now you have the red on your hook. And you want to pull the tail of the black and the red tight. Now, I had just enough to do this um, with the black, but chances are you would be connected to um, your yarn ball with the black. So what you want to do is just keep it connected for a little bit until you put a few stitches into the next round. So for rounds, 10 and 11 we are going to just single crochet around so for the first stitch you want to hold the two tails on the top and then go into the stitch and then yarn over and pull it back through and then yarn over and pull your stitch and see there's the first red stitch and then we've also put those two tails inside of the stitch so that way they are secure and you want to do that with them for the next couple of stitches. So you just want to go underneath them and then pull, you want to hold them too, so otherwise they get in the way. And I am like overzealous, so I do it like four times to make sure that they don't go anywhere. And then you can cut your black from your yarn. Like I said, I just had enough to finish this. And then uh, you can just pull those tails over to the right and then continue single crocheting around for rounds 10 and 11. At the end of round 11, you will have 30 stitches. Now for round 12, we are going to start to decrease. So to begin round 12, you are going to insert a single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So there's one, there's two, there's three. Then you're going to put an invisible decrease into the next two stitches, or I should say a next stitch where you're going to combine the two stitches into one and to make an invisible decrease you are going to insert your hook underneath the front loop only of the next stitch then you're going to insert your hook into the front loop only of the next stitch you're going to yarn over pull through both of those front loops you have two loops on your hook yarn over and finish the stitch and you're just going to repeat that you're going to do three single crochets, so single, 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 and then invisible decrease. And if you don't like to do invisible decrease, you can definitely just do the regular decrease. I just prefer the invisible because, um, well, as its name implies, you can barely tell where the decrease is, and I like the way that it looks when you're making um, rounded objects. So you just continue that all the way around for round 12. At the end of round 12, you will have 24 stitches. For round 13, we are going to do a single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So that's one, that's two, and then you're gonna do an invisible decrease, taking the next two stitches and making them into one. Yeah, there we go. And you're going to just repeat that around. 
a single crochet, single crochet, and then an invisible decrease all the way around for round 13. At the end of round 13, you will have 18 stitches. For round 14, we are going to do a single crochet into the first stitch, and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. And then we are going to repeat that around. We are going to do single crochet and then invisible decrease. At the end of round 14, you will have 12 stitches. Now when you're finished with round 14, you want to go ahead and start stuffing your little Mickey Mouse ball. Now the hole is pretty small at this point, so you might need something long and skinny to shove the stuffing in with. I like to use the end of one of my skinnier crochet hooks because it's long and it's perfect because I cannot get my fingers in there. Now, depending on what you want this for, you don't want to overstuff it. If you want him to sit on a shelf, you don't want to stuff him like crazy full. But if you're going to make him into like a backpack or purse bobble, then you can stuff him as full as you want because he will be hanging. Now, that's one of the reasons why I love this Mickey Mouse so much because you can turn it into a backpack bobble. All you have to do is insert, or I guess more rightly, so sew a keychain hook or, or a ring to the top of Mickey once you're finished. Just sew it right there. And he ends up being a super cute little bobble. Now once you have stuffed him to the stuffiness that you like, you can move on to round 15. Okay, that's pretty stuffed. So for round 15, we are going to be doing invisible decreases around. So you just want to do an invisible decrease so we are going to turn the 12 stitches from the previous round into six stitches. So that's an invisible decrease. And then you would just repeat that all the way around for round 15. At the end of round 15, you will have six stitches. And this is the last round for the Mickey body. So what you wanna do is just cut your red yarn and pull it through. You want to cut enough so you have a tell because we are going to sew his little booty close. And what you want to do is just go underneath each of those six stitches. Now you can go under both loops and you just go under one. I have done it both ways. I don't really notice a difference. I think you probably notice more of a difference if you're in different type of yarn. This one is cotton. I don't really notice the difference. I've tried it both ways. Trying to see what, which one I get a better, like, smoother finish, but I don't really notice the difference. So what you want to do is just tug on that yarn until you close the hole. And then you just want to make double sure that you closed it. Okay, and you just want to take your yarn. I always shove it through the middle. And then pull it. Make sure that the bottom looks closed and smooth, and then you're going to tie a knot into this yarn, like so. And you're going to go back into the exact hole that you came out of, and then go through another hole, and just gently tug the knot, and then you wanna pull this yarn and cut it, and just work, work your Mickey Mouse body until the end disappears, and if it doesn't, take a yarn needle and shove it down. <laughs> and so you have Mickey Mouse's body complete, and you can set this aside as we make his ears. To begin Mickey's ears, we are going to insert six single crochets into a magic ring. So here's the first. You wanna add your stitch marker. Okay, and then two, three, four, five, 
and six. And then you want to tug on the tail of your magic ring so you can close it, but you don't want to close it too much. You want to still leave a slight gap until we do round two. So for round two, we are going to insert an increase into each stitch of the previous round. So that's the first stitch and put my marker. And we're going to do two. And then we just continue that all the way around. Put an increase into each of the six stitches from the previous round. At the end of round two for the ears, um, you are going to have 12 stitches and we are going to tug on the magic rings tail so we can close up the hole in the middle and then all you got to do to finish this is slip stitch to the first stitch of the round and then you want to cut your yarn and leave a long tail for sewing and then what you want to do, I'm going to pull that through, is you want to take the magic tail ring and you want to weave it into the back of the stitches and then cut that off so that way you don't see that when we sew it onto the ear later or I'm sorry the head when we sew the ear to the head later so all you want to do is just weave it into these stitches so you can't see it and then well can't get my needle through this table okay and you're just gonna weave it through a couple of these stitches where you can't see it and then we are going to we are going to cut it so that way we're gonna cut it pretty close as close as you can without getting um, cutting your stitches and then you have your ear right here all finished and ready and you just need to make another one once you have both of your ears made, it's time to sew them onto the Mickey body. Now you want to find the front, and obviously you see where our seam line is. So that is the back, so this is the front. So you want to position your ears on round four. So one, two, three, four. You want the top of your ear to be at round four. And you want to look at your body from back to front to make sure that it's centered on the um, Mickey Mouse body and then you just want to sew that onto the head and then you would repeat once you sew this one on you want to repeat the same process oops I lost that one but one two three four so they're both the top of the ear is going to be at one two three four at round four so that way it looks proportionate once you have Mickey's ears sewn onto his body, it's time to embroider the lines for his buttons. So what you want to do is you want to find the center of his body in the front. You want to make sure that this lines up with the center between the ears. Yeah, see, that's pretty good. Okay, so what you want to do is have five spaces in between the stitches. So I don't know if you can tell on there or not, but I'm going to count out. These are going to be my center ones. So that's one and two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put a button right here. We're going to see what that looks like before we do this. One, two, three, four, five. Right? One, two. And then I put another button here and let me put my stitch marker there. And we can see if that looks even or not because you can adjust this depending on if you like the placement of them or not and I think that looks pretty good so all we're gonna do is you're gonna take a length of white yarn that has a knot at the end you're gonna come from a different direction than where we're going and then you want to come out of that bottom hole and then you're going to just pop that knot in and you don't want to pull it too tight because then it'll pop our right through and then we are just going to make loops right here like so and you want to go over that a couple of times and then 
Make sure you don't grab the ears. And you want to pull them pretty tight. Make sure the yarn's like side by side. So that way. And then once you do that, you go on to the next one. There's your first one. And go on and repeat it for the next one. After you have sewn on your little white buttons on your Mickey Mouse Amigurami, you're finished. Now you can easily put him on the shelf with um, your other Amigurami and he could be super cute. Or you could sew a key ring or hook to him and make him a backpack bobble. Totally adorable. Now if you've enjoyed this video, I hope that you would like it, share it, and subscribe to the It's a Corinne YouTube channel. And if you would like the free written pattern for this ball, you can head over to my website at itsocorinne.com. And I'll also add a link down below in the description so you can easily go there with a list of the supplies that I use to make Mickey Mouse. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya!